Patrick. You're up, Patrick. Cool. So, Danielle, you're going to play the second player in that part. Um, why, <coughs> do you guys have the parts and octaves in the other? Yes. Yes. Do you play the lower one or do you play the upper one? Please? Um, I think that's all I need to say. Where are you starting, Patrick? We're starting at the pickup to E. Which move? First move. Back. First move. I think that's all we need to say for your trip. So yeah, pick up the E, please. I'll give you one, two, and then.
Um, I would like to try something. Um, horns at measure 105. We have a die. I want you to try and just like soar out of the texture. Right? All of a sudden, we have just beautiful horn sound right there. Do you see where I'm talking about? You're marked piano. I know that. I just want to try it and see. It's right where your crescendo comes in. I just want to try it and see if I, how it sounds, see if I like it. So can we start back at pick up to E and have you do that? We might stop. Pick up to E. Um, 
I mean, I know that it's high for some instruments, but make sure we're really listening down. I really like the sound cha concept change. Uh, that's really good. Can we start? Actually, you are out of time. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Thanks, Patrick. <clears throat> Um, I approach this one differently than last go around. Um, How so? I, well, last time I went through the music and I was like, well, this is probably going to happen here, and I had it all written down. But this time I just have some character notes on post it notes. And other than that, I really had no um, agenda for what was going to happen with the release beforehand. I just uh -huh. was going to go with what they did. Okay, great. Um, I thought that that went okay. Um, all right, ensemble. What? Come on! All right. Here we go. I like that you told us what you wanted to buy as so-so, but I thought you could think about asking us as a question. Uh, I thought it was good that you were experimental, but the music out of the score, uh, like what you hear in the horn, um, just try to take your own interpretation and put it into what you want to be. Cool. So you Patrick, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a few leading questions. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll always if I'm gonna ask you a question where I have a, a desired answer, I will always tell you I'm gonna ask you some leading questions. I, um, all right. So first, when you wanted the horns to come out of the texture, why why did you ask them to do that? Uh, first, I just wanted to hear it, uh, hear what would, what it sounded like, um, because it's the beginning of a kind of a transition change uh, into that maestro, so I thought that, that the horn kind of like victory sound, okay. you know, uh, heroic sound going into that uh, more um, majestic section of that mic. Okay. Um, what's another way you can hear, you could get them to, you could make it so that you could hear? What other, th what other tools do you have in your toolbox? Um, well, I hear them more in the context, in the, what, what else could you do with what's happening in order to hear the horns? Uh, we can bring everybody else down. So. Okay, great. Now, my next question is, what's your vision of this section, E, to the end? What is it? How does uh, it fit into the overall context of the movement? Well, E starts as like the softest part, portion of the piece. Aha! Uh -huh. so. Okay, was it truly soft, Eddie? Uh, maybe the one time I went, but no. even then it wasn't. It still wasn't soft. They can play much softer, but they don't. They won't. And this is this is standard. This is normal. Ensembles won't play soft unless they're a professional ensemble, unless you beg a little, and you have to train them how to do this. So I mean, you have to say, mm -mm, "It's not soft enough." And then I mean, you might have to just do this and stop conducting time. Just give them the hand, and then, or you'll have to say, "Let me just hear um, the softest you can possibly play. Let's just hear what that is." So you have to like explore that that avenue with an ensemble. So yes, I agree, it's kind of like the softest point in the movement. To me, it's the softest point in the movement and then it builds to the loudest point in the movement, right? And it all happens very kind of gradually. So also watch on the video how big you are. So if you will conduct this big, they won't, they can't play loud if you're this big, they won't. It'll be weird for them. Um, so explore that as well and then when you say to the horns horns can you bring it up like three percent you'll hear it if everyone else is softer okay one other thing um the choice to subdivide were you is was it like a three two i think that you were doing like one and two and three and four and then there's a big b5 that's okay um how could you achieve the same effect without changing the meter Like changing what you're doing with conducting in terms of, because you were bouncing in places that were not 3-4. We were not expecting right. to see. So how could you, within the context of 3-4, how could you achieve the same result? 
Uh, you could just do it that way. Yeah. One and, sorry, so one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Mm -hmm. Same idea, it's just with the, the rebound before the big right. beat. You could exaggerate. Mm -hmm. And I, I would go with that, just because that one extra beat in there feels really, really strange to the ensemble. Did you guys feel weird about that at all? No, no it didn't bother. A couple of them, a couple of them it bothered, um, but some of them it didn't. Um, you. That's a, sp a kind of a point where you could risk losing some people if they weren't sure which beat you were on. So I would just one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I would stay within the context of three, four there. Okay. okay. Overall, I thought you did really, really well. Good energy. I thought Matt's comment was right on. Kind of command of the ensemble was really, really good. Good facial expression. Yay, Patrick.